come in and then sure. we can start that I guess. would be great yeah just curious to know how old is uh, mail mode as a company so mail mode started in 2020 and uh, we uh, we have basically you know like uh, uh, scaled up quite well in this uh, last two years uh, so most 90 percent of the uh, growth has happened uh, at the time of the pandemic basically so that's the story of all startups which started um, uh, in the first half of 2020 or in the second half i guess it's been a completely different experience i joined um, mail modo initially as a subject subject matter expert now i'm working for them full time uh, uh, i've had like six years yeah. plus experience in the marketing automation industry and uh, it's been a wonderful journey with them so far uh, one of fantastic. one of the sorry that's great to hear yeah yeah and uh, in fact uh, uh, i would say i'm uh, talking to someone who is in such a nascent phase of uh, his startup uh, uh, for I, I don't recall talking to someone who has been in such a nascent phase like you you guys are just six months old right yeah and uh, uh, so you know like i i feel the maximum efforts the maximum marketing uh, uh, efforts come in at this phase this is the hardest phase of any startup uh, so uh, we would love to Absolutely. hear your uh, foundation journey uh, why start ladder how did this idea occur to you and uh, uh, like uh, why uh, why your target cohort is uh, those users who have just you know like graduated and are looking for jobs i think uh, very interesting like a little bit about myself i have been working in uh education space for over four years throughout my undergrad uh everything from a k-12 level to working with you know uh municipal school students uh the ones you know underprivileged students in government schools to working on some very innovative technologies like holographic technology uh your augmented reality and then from there to going to for, for my master's to london business school uh when i came back to india it hit me really hard you know uh we went to a college union and i realized what that my entire batchmates of undergrad, all of them are unemployed. You know, uh, that was no. a very hard eating thing because uh, we all had spent a great time together. We all were, you know, there were companies coming on campus. We were mm. recruiting and suddenly everybody was unemployed. Uh, reasons were many. That sort of hit me back and I decided not to go back to London to the different opportunities available there and build something of my own here. Uh, that's where the start ladder came in presence. That means that's amazing. Uh, start your career journey with us to the top of the career ladder. You know, you start your career with us right. and you stay with us until you're on the top of that career ladder. So that's why the name Start Ladder came from uh, for us. Uh, journey has been very interesting. We pivoted a lot. Uh, different models, uh, like you said, the most important thing in education today is building trust, right? And when you're a new company, right. a new brand, Trust building is the most important important thing you want to do with your audience today. And I think rightly said, marketing has been a very critical thing for us as early stage education company with the rise of all educators building their own ventures, uh, new companies coming in and with the uh, surge of investments coming in edtech space, there are too many players right now. So building trust and building trust fast has been extremely critical today in edtech space and we have been right. we are not yet up to the up to the mark or there yet but we are soon getting there uh with that pace we are just six months old with a lot of ideation we have just made a very big pivot in jan and we are quickly scaling up to becoming a brand or a known brand that's so interesting to hear uh yes i'll just make this uh, a little bit interactive for our uh, audience also so a quick yeah. question uh since 2020 uh, whoever has taken at least one course online, uh, please reply over here and we will we will see the numbers ourselves. Yeah, there has been a definite uh, a surge in the number of uh, people opting in for uh, upskill courses and yeah. ed tech courses, which are which are not the K-12 and the old school uh, courses, which give, give you a degree, but rather they help you 
to upgrade your skill set and be relevant in the respective industries uh, that's yes. what the trend has been i believe and I think, with the startup uh, culture covid made people realize uh, covid made people realize one thing you know there is a huge gap in what colleges teach you versus what employers expect from you absolutely absolutely they do completely and, uh, different things so it's very right. uh, you know in college you study a 1990 syllabus which is highly irrelevant for today and books haven't changed since ages uh with with faculty is not motivated to teach you uh, your peer is not motivated to learn uh, it is not a conducive environment for somebody to learn and especially virtual has made it even more difficult and challenging for colleges to deliver quality education absolutely you you don't learn how to make startups in school basically it's when you step out you you uh, you uh, are exposed to the real world that's when you get ideas and fortunately in india yes. like unlike our childhood when we were exposed to roadies and splits villa now the kind of <laughs> kind of uh, uh, content on television has also changed you know like uh, we have a shark tank india encouraging all new startups to uh, expand which is really brilliant uh, yeah so coming back to your journey yash uh, what were the significant challenges that you faced uh, when you initially started i think what happens right in any any entrepreneur's journey what is the most common thing which happens is right you have certain hypothesis and expectations of how your users or your potential audience behaves right mm-hmm. you have some estimations guesses assumptions as you mm-hmm. go forward in that journey trying different things to to validate your assumptions and hypothesis mm-hmm. you come closer and closer to the ground reality of the user behavior right the day you come to a ground reality of how a user behaves and what their t- true needs are is and you acknowledge that and you build for that is the time you come closer to something called as a product market fit got it got it so that is the journey which has been so far we have tried almost seven different models in edtech every model we try very fast uh, our mm-hmm. team has been very agile and very fast with execution so we try very fast we realize what were the pains we could not uh, we did never realized what there and eventually mm. we quickly move on uh, to experiment with something new and see what works and right now we are at a phase where we see something uh, at least working in a short term and we are seeing if how we can scale it so i think that that is a Got very it. big uh, challenge right ambiguity hmm. the more you try right. uh, you figure out 99 different ways which don't work rather right. than finding that one when maybe you find that one way which works out and you scale that up understood Uh, what about educators not being exposed to online coaching that much as uh, offline coaching even for them it's a sudden yes. transition do you think that's a challenge i think uh, it ha- it is a very big challenge so it depends a lot on categories mm-hmm. as well right so the Got it. so if you talk about traditional institutions the colleges uh, their mm-hmm. professors are not used to teaching online so yes definitely right. uh because a lot of teaching in college environment goes on body language and you know peer to peer learning or right. you know a uh, cold calling that's what we right. call it right like right right so that essentially uh, change dramatically when we go on a digital platform but when we talk mm-hmm. about educators who were teaching from a uh, let's say mm-hmm. uh, different institutions or like other edtech players who were associated with them in test prep market especially uh, we mm-hmm. see that uh, they were quite comfortable and the transition was very smooth from uh, physical to digital Got because it. they were already Got teaching in a hybrid environment right right makes sense the last question regarding your foundation journey uh, which circles back to you know like why why did you choose this particular cohort uh, it's uh, primarily uh, because you you faced you witnessed this challenge there were like a lot of graduates uh, that you uh, that you knew were like not employed but uh, since product marketing entails a lot of market research also you would have any ballpark number uh, as far as india is concerned what Absolutely. is the percentage i think you won't believe there are 40 million graduates in india every year right 40 million that's okay. four crore people who go out of college every year mm-hmm. only top 1% colleges in india actually have campus placement got it and india is a country where everything everybody is dependent on campus to give them jobs which is not the case when okay. you go to a london or you go to a new york or you go to any other countries right there we hunt right. our jobs in so the the difference in indian education and uh, the education in uk is uh, in uk we are equipped to find jobs on our own right we are equipped to reach out to people 
they teach us how to find opportunities how to interview in india mm. there is a there is a standard expectations of students that we have worked hard and cracked certain ex- entrance exams now we are right. in an institution the main purpose of even studying for an entrance exam here is that my life will be sorted after i graduate because i'll get a campus placement very result driven that mindset right. is something which is a problematic mindset and uh, mm. what we don't realize is that there is only top 1% of indian population the student population which has access to companies direct opportunities who have campus placements what about 99% others who potentially come from tier 3 tier 4 cities or small villages or rural part of india that's 65% indian population uh, where companies potentially don't have their bases also right and then migrating from a rural india to a metro hmm. with no exposure no understanding of how things work in metro and finding hmm. new jobs it's a very painful stressful and anxious experience for a student makes sense makes sense that's uh, that's really insightful uh, before proceeding to the next sec- uh, section uh, guys those of you who have joined in late uh, so there was a question asked uh, how many of you have taken at least one course to upgrade your skill set uh, post 2020 uh, you can reply on the chat and if you have any questions while we will have a separate q and a round you you can ask any immediate questions as well all right uh let's proceed to the next section so yeah. next section uh, yash is uh, more about the latest uh, trends in edtech the emerging trends in edtech which are uh, quite noticeable and also uh, the impact of covid-19 on edtech how how the strategies have changed how the target audience has changed when it comes to edtech <clears throat> i think uh... for the world uh, covid was a curse but for edtech industry right covid was a boom 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 right because a lot of things uh, dramatically became easier for edtech companies during covid mm. number one the adoption of digital learning scale 10x right. during covid right versus what it was pre covid now people right. were spending more time on the screens learning right they were learning more on the screen which right. gave people more opportunity to tap into different segments so you see a lot of right. startups like which are enablers there are two type of startups essentially which you know in post covid era we see right enablers and outcome driven startups your enablers Got are it. players like speed teachment who enable teachers coaches and creators to create their own uh, you know to digitalize their own learning interfaces and create their own coaching classes or training institutions digitally and then right. you have outcome driven plat- platforms like a byju's or like test prep platforms hmm. or you know hmm. like something like an upgrade which helps people makes people employable or like us which again makes people employable uh right there was a surge in these two type of platforms when we talk about what happened during covid and why because there was a big pain on both hmm. these ends so when we talk right. about virtual learning it surged like anything uh at the same time people's ability to pay for online learning also went high the right. reason being uh, people now wanted to invest in learning and growing themselves because they were scared about unemployment second uh, there was a lot of free time available especially in k12 yeah. segments parents wanted some free time from their children so you had an emergence of something called as extra curricular learning platforms right 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 which were very few in number good so i think a lot of different trends have picked up uh, again trends and trends are now changing so you see players like byju's players like masai school starting their own physical centers again so that's surprising right. a digital startup going back to you know starting physical centers uh, we see a phenomenal call as digital which is physical and digital hybrid which is it's like a full circle right. they all started with one to centers and they're going back to that again right right from the lens of uh, lens of types of courses opted in right uh even that has seen uh, a radical uh, change i believe uh, when it comes to the types of courses because earlier i believe uh, k12 and uh, courses which gave you a degree uh, were very prominent but right now suddenly uh, the uh, uh, the 
courses which actually uplift your uh, skill sets uh, like business strategies product development product management all these courses have suddenly emerged yes so let's understand right what are the different type of courses firstly which exist right there are four type of courses uh, or learning experiences let's just call that right, right. number one is your self paced learning which was very prevalent you have coursera udemy and these platforms looking at a self paced that you learn on your own uh, you potentially complete it and you get a certificate that certificate is valuable which adds value on your cv right. and makes you sort of helps you get a job faster assumingly right right then you have your something called as your cohort based courses which has been on the peak this is the best time for cohort based courses right now because what covid taught us is right that we don't like being isolated we are social beings right as humans so social learning is what cohort based learnings enables it enables you to engage with peers it enables you to engage with the trainer it is live it's interactive it holds your attention and it right. gives you skills third is something right. called as a community based learning which is essentially and large peer driven right there is no instructor mm-hmm. everyone is on same level there is no authority and there is nothing like that you sort of ask questions you learn you share knowledge there's a discussion uh, twitter spaces is a best space right now you know for social learning or a peer to peer learning right, right? Uh, you can hear right. you can talk you are club house mm-hmm. the social platform but essentially have a large focus on social learning and fourth the most uh, crucial part right now is which is scaling and i think which will scale is your application of technology right? virtual learning learning virtual spaces if you can't go to your school or you can't go to your college go on a go, go on a uh, metaverse uh, based college and you have your new startups emerging who are you know uh, enabling fortnite or pubg type digital learning experiences uh, like virtual classrooms yeah immersive virtual That's classrooms it. to be very precise so these are essentially four type of uh, models you will see uh, evolving also Understood. what has happened during the covid the learner goals had there was a big shift in the purpose of learning right right to initially people would learn to genuinely upskill a large chunk of population to learn uh, to potentially earn certificates right when uh, right. during covid right most of the bigger players like qdemy or coursera automatically started giving certificates for free so lot of these certificates mm. lot lost their value mm. Mm. so the, there was a shift from learning to upskill and learning to build a profile to learning directly mm. for outcomes people Understood. started spending more time on your netflix and your social platforms uh, essentially mm. what these platforms give you instant gratification right you can pause mm. any time you want you can watch anything to you want so basically you get anything you want at any time right right now people and want you get quick instant. results also yeah now everybody wants a quick result and everybody wants right. to learn things which will give them a quick outcome or uh, be associated to such educational companies which promise a quick outcome it's the age of the t20 exactly yeah yeah understood and uh, yash from the lens of uh, uh, sales methods right earlier i remember a lot of uh, a uh, lot of these uh, edtech companies like a byju's and white hat they had door to door salesmen and right now i believe you know like due to the pandemic uh, people rely heavily on digital marketing even email marketing uh, in the affiliate space can be very impactful when it comes to generating mqls and then converting those mqls to sqls yeah <clears throat> i think uh, that is very true uh... the age of digital is here officially uh, initially it was still uh, human to human driven sales uh, right. so called right now it has become product led sales or product led growth we are there at that space right. where it is a you have a product uh, people recognize your brand and if they see a ad which if even 5% i want to buy it and your ad is attractive enough i would potentially click and if the ticket size is in the range where i don't think twice before paying the paying from my wallet i'll pay and buy also right right uh, digital has mm-hmm. worked but when we talk about last bit like so last bit is anything beyond 2500 or 3000 or even at that ticket size if your brand is big enough right there is still a human touch which is required okay right a human touch requires so that's why now it has models i i don't know maybe from earlier so they have evolved to something called as three different teams for sales so initially 
what would happen the person who would do the first call the person who would do the first call essentially would go and then give the demo also at home over the weekends and then the sale would happen now there is a separate right. team for pre sales then there is a right. team which does the demos and then there is a team who takes right. care of the customer onboards them and uh, on the product so there are multiple right. layers and different human interventions which are which still exist right. the right. role of email marketing has definitely evolved a lot because initially what happened was yes. uh, people were not used students especially were not used to opening their emails like it was very rare a college student right. would open an email right because you would go to college in colleges most colleges you were still using physical pen and paper books to make right. notes and write right. now suddenly everything is on gmeet or like microsoft teams or different platforms which exist for different schools right Right. so the the role of the role email played in their life started becoming critical right they started mm. opening emails more they started sharing notes via emails and suddenly right. email became a dominant way where the second time very dominant and that's a huge you know because everybody sees the right so right. the people in uh, especially if you look at players of player on educate team brother they heavily rely on uh, email marketing for lead generation the reason being uh, that segment is highly highly sticky to email like everybody every young professional or a graduate today opens linkedin and email every morning at least Absolutely. from uh, metros and universities right right the concept of the zero dark inbox uh, from the the concept of the zero dark inbox wherein in the us people check all their emails delete the unnecessary ones and retain the important ones it's totally slowly approaching india as well and uh, you have an icing on the cake i believe with uh, mail modo wherein you can send forms you can embed forms within the email itself i was speaking to uh, uh, someone yesterday i was just comparing how you know amp emails uh, could be considered as the web 3.0 of email marketing what web 3.0 is to web 2.0 amp emails is to normal vanilla emails yeah. so so uh, besides email marketing um, uh, i believe when it comes to tier 1 cities uh, your uh, uh, email marketing channel would be standing out it would be the most uh, prominent channel in terms okay. of roi yeah got it uh when it comes to the marketing challenges faced by you uh what are the prominent marketing challenges one that comes to my mind for any edtech would be a high drop off between a sign up and a conversion and uh, what think, measures uh, do you take to that is this? also a big challenge which does come up right but what happens is uh, uh like i am aware right your mail modus emails they have a feature in which you know uh, immediately when the sign up happens there's a automatic you know reminder on email which mm -hmm. essentially helps us you know uh, to reduce that drop off rate and that is That's something which we are right now amazing. you know actively working on the second thing being right uh, the main purpose of email marketing uh, the use case we strongly see is right is lead generation the cost right. per lead if we go and you know compete with our uh, other players right yeah. uh, on market facebook the ads very is very high is it's, it's crazy because one same person is seeing 50 other ads on the same instagram or facebook but right. uh, the best part about email is uh, that even though this is the firstly the comp competition on emails is limited right and if your email is aesthetic enough and it the value proposition is right uh the person is happily giving you the lead second thing being is on instagram a lot of times uh, there is a auto fill right yes you can add a few more questions but a lot of data gets auto filled right. so the intent is not so high but on email when you are right. able to get more space on defining your value proposition your offering and then when somebody manually fills in the data on the form which is directly embedded without being redirected somewhere else that becomes a high prospect lead at a very low cost so to give you some a uh, ground numbers uh, for us our lead cost on instagram is uh, 4x more than a lead cost from mail modo that's so interesting to you yeah because i think because we have been able to show the right value proposition to the 
to folks and these are warm leads are conversion rates so if in normal we have a between 2 to 5% conversion rates so on email marketing we had a 10% conversion rate because the value proposition email, was email marketing as yeah yeah email marketing has always been my favorite channel and it's really good to hear that you know like uh, it has been working well for you as well right yeah, so uh, it's working great 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 to hear that yes uh, yes one more uh, uh, one more problem would be you know like a high drop off uh, between uh, a sign up and a profile completion i believe uh, since in the edtech space there are multiple steps to capture the user information right so a lot of users yes. what they do is they end up signing up but they don't complete the profile so that's also you know like a use case which uh, you would be solving uh, pay back in uh, email marketing we haven't yet figured it out we this that Got is it. a definitely a problem we are still figuring it out we yet don't know how we can tackle it well but we hmm. definitely are working towards it right now so that is a definitely a big challenge because if we are making somebody employable we need to understand what their needs are what what they are looking for what their hopes are and potentially map right. them with the right you know upskilling modules and the opportunities which come through so collecting data is uh, very important uh, it has to be multi layered because i can't have somebody give asking me 10 questions while i sign up i'll drop off i'll not sign up exactly hmm hmm right right uh what's your take on retention uh in terms of returning customers i think all at tech companies face a challenge of getting so, their the uh, most interesting thing about today's learners is right uh if i am talking about a learners community okay huh. community i say community because community is where there is a, some kind of sense of belonging people feel welcome right. you, everybody ha- we are humans we like being in social groups right right that's why i call a community right. uh Right. Today there is no loyalty for a community, right? Uh, somebody who is mm. a part of my community can be a part of some ex ex startups community, can be part right. of a grads community, and that mm. user is okay if they derive value for the most optimal cost benefit ratio from either of the mm. places. So there Makes is no sense. loyalty element, right? So retention becomes very difficult here. The mm. reason being, if somebody else is giving them outcome, uh, they will go there. Also, they won't trust me alone. to give them an outcome right or desired instant gratification they'll hedge their bets with another it's like stock market right you don't put all your eggs in one basket so learners are also right. very smart they don't put their eggs in one basket so if a person is learning from uh, let's say an academy's test prep platform they would ideally also be going to a offline coaching plat coaching uh, plus they will be using some other third platform for test prep or like a mock inter mock, mock tests right right and i think uh, uh, this can be uh, improved a little bit with uh, timely feedback just when the user is about to complete a course you take a feedback and uh, uh, suppressing the negative feedback uh, users you uh, nudge the users who have not given a feedback or given a positive feedback to come back to your platform i think that is a very interesting point right so when we also you know learn our programs workshops modules outcomes right uh, feedback is mm-hmm. ex- been extremely critical so far in in us able to understand how the user feels how the user thinks and how the user reacts to certain situation or Absolutely. a problem at hand or a task at hand right uh, so collection right. of feedback is very critical but uh, what we realize is right uh, google forms or the traditional ways are the most uh, let's just say they are they are not the appropriate the most appropriate ways to collect feedback right right <laughs> so let's just say have some big platforms where you collect feedback on like a type form or like xyz right different crm tools uh we are looking at a right. use case of mail modo being used as a feedback mechanism as soon as a user gets outcome right. from us so right. experience matters everywhere like they also should look at it and like there it should something should tickle in their mind to see okay now this is visually appealing now i can spend 2 minutes just looking at it and writing what they want me to like you know what they hope me to answer right right since you are in the very nascent phase uh, i was uh, curious about your uh, seo plans uh, like uh, how you plan to you know like uh, uh, go up the ranks and uh, right now i feel even the branded keywords would not be ranking that well for you 
yeah, I think uh, so. I'm not the best person to discuss about uh, SEO. Like my experience about SEO is limited. So we have for dedicating uh, looking at that. But we're at 98 SEO score right now. Again, we have tested it. So we're going to see what good these SEO scores. Yeah, we are looking to do better on SERP. yeah it's a game of patience like i i try to tell my marketing lead if uh, can you pick us and land on first page in one month they say like it will take 6 to 8 months so like okay got it got it so uh, proceeding to the uh, next section now uh, we would love to share your journey with mail modo so far what has been your experience and uh, how uh, how you have been sending the emails from mail moto i think so let me just tell you uh, about my previous bad experience with email marketing right uh, with that with a previous vendor we or a company we worked with for emails uh, what didn't work out essentially was how they scaled their pricing plan right the mail moto's pricing model is fantastic the credit based system rather than a contact based system that itself was one of the big value proposition which we saw so that we could easily scale up the number of contacts we could have without uh, it impacting our financials heavily because at nascent stage every rupee matters uh, we are very cutthroat with our financials and how we manage it the second reason okay. being right the kind of aesthetical appeal and the templates mm-hmm. and direct form embeds and so many different features the journeys we could make uh, mail modo had right though all those features were coming at a very huge premium or potentially were not available in the vendor or the company we were working with previously the third and the most Got interesting it. thing about uh, mail modo is the amp right uh, that was something very new uh, we hadn't had that with our previous company we were working with and that was something which uh, actually when we were tap- tapping into gen z uh, hmm. these emails just work really well and you know we were able to scale our community uh, from you know uh, 8000 using email marketing and that uh, 50% spike a lot of uh, you know uh, 30 to 40% or 50% of that 50% spike from 8000 to 12000 came from email marketing on mail modo that's amazing so uh, we were able to you know promote some of the leads and do some good sales right So uh, this is uh, so this, this is one, one of, of your uh, uh, we had drawn. yeah right where we were looking at right. different tools about growth and product operations right making them ready to tap into different tools yeah the way this email stands out basically so I think this uh, is a very fantastic thing. right yeah right. Uh, the way this email stands out is email basically how users can see the information yeah. within the email itself. Uh, yes, uh, uh, is it me or uh, there is a little bit of a lag from your end? Uh, I'm not sure. I think it's my network seems great right now. Uh, maybe a little bit of lag. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, intermittently, okay. there's a lag, so I am talking, and you know, like, uh, yeah, yeah. so. you were saying something about this email now i was saying that uh, it's very interesting because uh, when we look at other ads right we don't get enough space to portray or you know showcase what mm-hmm. is the exact value proposition so value gets lost and that's where you require a human right. intervention right to make even give the awareness on this email mm-hmm. campaign for conversion a sales team they were well aware about the program they were well aware about what was being taught so i remember Minutes spent per call also reduced drastically, which means our sales team could make a lot more calls than they used to make in usual, because the customer was already aware. So you know, in an IDA framework, uh, mm. there is first is awareness. Uh, you know, 
right. then there is your interest and then there is decision and then there is action so you know we were able to right. reach until the first two bits of it which is awareness and interest already via an email it saved a lot of uh, call time for our sales team right right it saves on a lot of hops basically that's interesting yeah. you know uh, uh, so far uh, so far uh, you know like uh, uh, email marketing uh, to uh, summarize email marketing has been one of your most uh, powerful channels uh, when it comes to at least targeting tier one cities that's yes. again very pleasant to hear uh, because uh, i'm a big fan of emails uh, the next uh, uh, the next 5 minutes i wanted to discuss with you uh, the uh, predicted trends in the edtech industry with web 3.0 coming in uh, with vr technologies and with uh, also other channels like whatsapp uh, uh, allowing you to reach out to users using offers so how do you see yourself uh, where do you see yourself in the next 5 years uh 5 years is too long uh, in this too space long. right it is evolving so fast uh right. we never know where we can be you know in terms of uh, you know road maps with so many different technologies coming in the behavior user behavior is changing rapidly uh you know within right. two years we saw four different type of user behaviors evolving in this segment and uh, we don't know with a uh, 10 minute delivery coming in how fast the user would want outcomes and uh, results uh, that's something which we cannot predict right now but where we see us is right uh rather than being a platform where people come every day uh, we want to be a we want to be there on platforms where people are every day and become a you know sort of take a chunk out of their lifestyle so if i'm right. building a platform where i want people to go and invest their time every day i am not competing with other edtech players i'm competing with netflix tiktok instagram and potentially right. uh, zoom right so right. rather than building a platform where i have to steal or fight with these giants i want to take a part of the life integrating of the giants makes sense rather than bringing them to us got it got it and uh, in terms of uh, the types of courses that you want to introduce uh, do you have a road map plan like i believe I, i was talking to you for the first time that's when you said uh, you coined a very impl- important term uh, when i asked you was your uh, startup aiming to reduce the employment uh, rates in india you said not the yeah. employment rates but the employability rates employability. which i really like it's Absolutely. right so uh, we in, want in terms to of is employability in india yes can you sorry yeah yeah uh, you were saying sir yeah so um, i was talking about that vision and from the lens of that vision um, uh, do you have a course road map planned ahead uh, in terms of number of courses you are going to introduce yes we do uh, yes types do. of courses so most interesting yeah. part about our courses is right uh, our courses uh, are designed in a way where you know uh, Uh, they are not potentially designed uh, based on our understanding of something. We design these courses working with some of the companies who you know also hire from our learning base, right? Who hire our learners. So we work very closely with them. We, you know, what the first thing we look at while design when we start designing a course, we look at the job description, right? the skeleton map first to design so that's exactly just the agile and scale up as the roles also evolve because uh, if i tell you a road map today that 5 years later i want to be, you know make web 3 web developers 5 uh, years later who knows there is web 4 web 5 i right, am building right. a system and a road map and a process hmm. in which any role comes up we will be able to create upskilling modules within 7 days hmm. and find Got learners it. upskill them and make them employable and deploy that employable talent to the companies fast right right makes sense makes sense got it yash um it it has uh, it has been a really insightful discussion so far uh 
let's uh, let's uh, see what our audience has to ask um, any questions uh, uh, any doubts you guys can you know like uh, basically this is a q and a round you guys have any questions you can please feel free to ask <clears throat> Guys, uh, both Yash and me, uh, we wanted to be a very interactive session. Yeah, guys, feel free to ask questions. Happy to answer all of them. We'll wait for two, three minutes. Yeah, sure. So where in Bombay do you live, Yash? I live in Chembur. In Bombay. Chembur. Okay. Yeah. What about you? Where do you live? I live in Thane actually. Uh, I'm okay. working from Thane. Not too far. 30 minutes. <laughs> Not too far. Yeah. Yeah. So do you plan to, uh, uh, can I hope to see you on Shark Tank someday? Uh, I'm not sure about it. Achha. I really don't know if you will see me on any but, of the competitions. Uh, we prefer to have a slightly low key when we do our, uh, got it. you know, and we are in middle of a few uh, like transactions right now, which maybe next two to three months uh, we will be Looking forward to announce. Wonderful. Wonderful. Best of luck for that. Yeah. Thank you. Guys, questions, please. These 10 minutes are dedicated to you. Yeah, guys. Feel free to ask any questions. Uh, we'll do our best to answer the questions. Uh, so I think Shubhi has asked something. Uh, does Mailmodo have any special plans? Are you saying special plans uh, related to uh, edtech? So Shubhi, uh, uh, today itself we have launched a new pricing model. Uh, uh, our team, uh, uh, what I'll do is I'll just share the link over here so that you can have a look. Oh yeah, you have a new pricing plan. Uh, happy to check that out. Check that out as well. It's very interesting. Yeah. yeah. I think your pricing plans are best in the industry, probably. Yeah, yeah. Even even earlier, I was uh, basically you know like evaluating a lot of marketing tools. I was heading the direct marketing department of an agency. So yeah, okay. Mailmodo was uh, one of the most reasonable. Uh, I think uh, Yash Shobhi has asked you a question addressed to you. Okay, quite interesting one. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about Startletter community? Uh, so Startletter, we started Startletter community uh, around four months back. You know, uh, a few of us uh, wanted to encourage students for peer-to-peer -peer learning where they can find opportunities, uh, they can attend live sessions like these and many others with top industry experts coming and talking about different topics and just a space where a safe space where you can learn, you can chill, you can network, find opportunities, find jobs, find internships. And we have from there to today, we have grown up to 12,000 users and that also uh, almost organically. So it has been a great journey with the growth of our community and looking forward to see when it goes to 40,000, 50,000 in coming months.
using uh, Discord uh, for your community. Uh, Zishan, the most uh, interesting aspect about it is right. Uh, you need to be there where people are. So I ideally the most platforms for me was Facebook, right? Where you have your parents and Facebook groups. But what essentially happens is Telegram, right? Uh, there was no interaction possible. And Slack is something yet the professionality in Slack, but with students, gaming, boom, when deep. As what everybody is talking to, they talk about Microsoft Word 12. So, uh, everybody is on Discord today. So, the, rather than you know bringing people to some platforms or creating our own community SDKs on the platform, we thought, why don't we go where people are and scale that? And it has worked really well for us so far. As I said, our, our goal is not to bring a lot of people to our platform, but go where they are and add value and monetize where they are. So it has worked really well for us. Uh, there is a great peer to peer interaction. We have over 95% retention rates. Engagement is good. And we, are, we see ourselves uh, truly adding value to student lives because they are actually on that platform and they are active. Hope I was able to answer your question well. How are you leveraging the community for growth? Interesting question, right? So startups like us who are at nascent stage, uh, not heavily venture backed, right? Brand building, or we don't have, we are not influencers ourselves. I'm not an influencer myself. So, building brand, you know, building customer or user trust is the most important aspect in education space. So, with a community, we are able to. Trust. That is why today we are we are sort of able to hire great candidate and great talents. At the same time, we sort of have a reputation, or we are at least familiar to a. 15,000 students or 20,000 students at least know what start header is today with a fractional, uh, you know, branding spend. And that is how you leverage community for growth. Yes, uh, potentially community cannot be monetized that easily, but it definitely can help you scale up your brand brand's footprint. Okay. Yeah. Uh, happy to take any other questions. Harjot has a question for you. Okay, what are the major challenges you are facing in scaling up or building a good team as an early stage startup, right? So when you talk about early stage startups, right, if you are ideally not a pedigreed individual or with a, you know, a history of, you know, success or uh, experience or, or a deep experience in the field, uh, or you don't have a VC, you know, heavily VC back uh, or somebody uh, credible backing you. What happens is building an early teams becomes automatically very challenging, right? Because uh, me being a 22 year old, directly a graduate from college with no uh, full time work experience of yours, like, you know, in any specific domain, it definitely became a very big challenge to find, you know, early believers who potentially even an idea, which again keeps pivoting month on month when you are at an early stage and running experiments. So finding a good team was a big challenge, but fortunately right now we have a very strong core team in place with fantastic folks. From different I'm still the youngest person on the team uh, with the average age going around 27, 28. Uh, now, once the foundation is there, right? The second challenge is how do you go from uh, startup to scale up, right? Uh, when we talk about scale up, uh, Finding hiring every day is a big challenge today. Also, like I mentioned, uh, Surya, I am hiring, right? Uh, we are actively hiring for interns and full-time positions in different spaces. So hiring, building SOPs, building operations and processes, which are scalable, 
is fundamentally a big challenge, right? Because uh, you need to define structures, you need to define objectives, SOPs, which potentially can be scaled up to a 10,000 or 1,000, uh, you know, team members and maintaining the right culture in the company, uh, the right, uh, you know, creating an inclusive work environment to maintaining the gender diversity. Uh, a lot of different things come into the play. And again, I am also learning on the go. Uh, challenges will keep coming. Uh, we have a great team to tackle all these challenges. Okay, I hope I was able to answer your question, Harjot. Uh, next, we have someone. Uh, how difficult is email marketing for you? Is it effective in scaling and audience building? I think this is a very interesting question. Uh, email marketing essentially is slightly tricky when you do it for the first time, but uh, with a platform like MailMoto, it was very intuitive because uh, it's essentially a drag and drop mechanism for them, right? There is no coding involved or no, nothing or uh, technical uh, literacy or technical knowledge you need to require to create uh, fantastic looking emails. So if I'm not wrong, mail, mail mode is a no code platform where you could build mails without any difficulty. So for us, creating fancy appealing mails was a very easy job and definitely it was effective. Aesthetics work really well. If you have the right buttons, the right forms, it's very engaging and that definitely helps uh, audience build trust in your brand when they see a very aesthetic email landing in their inbox and not going in spam. Right. And to add to uh, what Yash said, uh, MailMoto is the only platform which lets you build AMP content without any uh, coding. Basically, there's no uh, drag and drop uh, editor for the type of emails uh, that you uh, saw earlier, uh, form embedded within an email. All the players in the market, all the other you know, ESPs, uh, hard code the emails. So it requires coding experience, which is why I would say uh, despite AMP emails uh, getting you such wonderful results, most of the marketeers are not able to uh, incorporate uh, AMP emails in their email program because of the coding difficulties. So what is your vision for 20 Nithan coming up for engineers and tech domain? Uh, very interesting uh, to share a little bit. Yes. Uh, by before the end of 2022, there is something really big coming for uh, engineers and tech domain. Currently, we are not touching tech domain right now because tech upskilling is by the nature of the domain is time consuming and it sort of does not fit our current approach, which is, you know, instant gratification of fast outcomes. But yeah, definitely something is in the loop for uh, all my tech community members and friends. Uh, definitely something which will uh, help you also land your first job fast, uh, making you also employable. Approach will be slightly different, but uh, in a very interesting way. So look out for October 2022 for that. Uh, you can join our discord community link uh, if that can be shared again happy to share that community link if we can share it Okay, great. Happy to answer any other questions. Uh, here they have, it has been shared with you. Awesome. Happy to answer any other questions if anybody has.
Okay, great. I will take a couple of more questions if there are any, and then uh, you know we can have a yeah. Then we can yeah. wrap up. So Yash, I see um, going by your background, you are a football fan. Actually, not. I'm. I that is still that's table tennis. I used to play oh, uh, okay. in state team when I was young. Like when I was young, with when I was in school, I'm still young. Like so, when when I was in school, I used to play for the state. Got it. I think Shivam has a question. Uh, are Mailchimp are... courses good for learning? Uh, I think for email marketing, right? Uh, you could look at Udemy courses. There are some rock solid Udemy courses. Uh, I don't know if Mailmodo has any video modules. Mailmodo is. Uh, we are actually uh, planning to but launch. Such yeah, a if that video is series, that would be a complete game changer. I mean, yeah. our all team members would be the first. Uh, users of those courses. No, we are definitely so planning. Email marketing is very diverse, right? You need to learn email marketing, uh, which is more platform centric. If you want to learn just how to make amazing emails, uh, you should look at Udemy. Yeah, and email marketing. The reason why it stands out from the other channels, you can look at email marketing from the technical lens and from the uh, marketing lens, creative lens. So the technical lens comprises of, you know, like IP warm up, infrastructure, reputation building and all that stuff. And creative lens is all about how good your emails are looking, uh, how you are strategizing the emails, what audience you're targeting. All these things uh, play a very prominent role in email marketing. Yeah. All right. So I think uh, if uh, anyone has any questions, last two minutes, then we are towards the end of the chat. Yeah. Uh, how to prevent emails from landing in spam? I think uh, I'm not the best person to answer this question. So yeah, if you can take it. <laughs> yeah. I so Shivam, that's, uh, uh, there is no one line answer to that. Uh, basically, uh, to answer that, you would need to define spam first. Spam is email sent in bulk to users who have not subscribed to your email. And both the keywords bulk and not subscribe are very important. So I'll give you the example, which I generally give, say you have a neighbor uh, and you see a vacant parking lot and you have a car to sell. You send the neighbor a one-on-one -on -one email to buy your car. That's not spam, even though the user has not subscribed to your email. But if you were to send that e same email to the entire neighborhood without knowing uh, if uh, any of them has a vacant parking lot or not, then it would be deemed as spam. So. If emails land in spam, there are three main areas to focus on. One is you need to look at what data set you are targeting. If the users are genuinely interested in your emails, if, if they're opening the emails and reporting to spam. Two is what kind of infrastructure you have built. What are the, uh, uh, how are the IPs placed with respect to Gmail spam filters and uh, Yahoo spam filters and Hotmail spam filters. And third, what is the reputation of your template? Uh, does your template have a prior history of landing in spam? Because Gmail uh, learns and evolves. Uh, so if you have had a lot of emails landing in spam with the same template, you can't use the same template, even though you are changing everything from domain name to IPs to everything. It will cause your emails to land in spam if you retain the same template. I think, uh, Yash, there's another question for you. Uh, I hope uh, that uh, answers um, your question, Shivam. Okay, what all opportunities are open? Uh, we are currently hiring for a lot of talent acquisition interns, which will in turn help us scale up uh, our teams. So we are hiring around 20 talent acquisition interns right now. We are hiring for uh, 
entry level uh, web developers. Uh, we are also hiring for uh, experienced product managers and also uh, growth and community leaders. So do check, do keep an eye on my LinkedIn post so to see what all we are hiring for because we hire really fast. So our average hiring time is 48 hours. I hope this answers your question. Uh, great. Okay, guys. Thanks for your time. Um, was uh, was lovely chatting with you, Yash. Uh, hope to catch up with you soon. Yeah, let's catch up. Have a good day. Yeah. You too. Bye. Bye, everyone. All right. So there, there is one last question. Does email help acquire a target audience that is young, like 20, 21 year old? Absolutely. It does. We Absolutely. are acquiring that audience. It does. Yeah. It does. It does. Okay, guys. Until next time. Yeah. Bye. See you again. Bye.